Welcome back to another video. Today is August 10th, 2021. As you guys can obviously see outside, it is dark. It's literally only a day after I just made the other video, or a few hours um, after I was just on the beach fishing for a fluke. So today we're actually at work. It's 3.20 a.m. right there. And I'm um, going to be a first mate today. I've been a first mate on tie and charters for about a month now. Um, we're based out of the Golden Nugget local to bring a team, which is kind of where I live here in the summer. Mostly it's been back bay trips, back bay fluke trips, tried one one wreck trip out there and I had some GoPros used to kind of lost that video. But fortunately today we uh, have all the GoPro issues sorted out and we woke up on time feeling energized 3.15 in the morning and uh, yeah today's trip is going to be for Mahi, Tuna and on the way we might go fluke and slash sea bass on the way in. So we're going to head out to the mid shore grounds about 30 miles or so. Um, it's random right now. Weather's not the best, but we still sail. We got a 31 contender, so we're gonna head out there and hope for the best. Then we'll be over at the boat, get everything rigged up, and then we'll be on our way out. So stay tuned, guys. It's gonna be an epic video. Look forward to showing you kind of some work play, hopefully catch some fish, and uh, definitely be putting the clients on some fish too. Today's gonna be great. to the boat, got everything chopped up back there, chopped the sardines, the chunk, and it's raining again, unfortunately, but uh, Tyler loves the rain, so he's playing back there with some squid. Well, uh, it's almost four o'clock, so we'll probably be shipping out of here pretty soon. I'm gonna munch down on the sizzly and down the uh, 24 ounce coffee. I'll have to hold it in for eight hours, so stay tuned, guys. See you out on the water. You. Keeper. Way to a limit. Get them down so they can deflate themselves. Oh, oh. stripped you over there, man. Yeah, trying to snag them. There you go. Man, all the small ones up here. What's up? See, I'm gonna get the last keeper of the limit. Yeah, what time is it? Is it limit by uh, 7 o'clock? It's 6.53? Yeah. You can make that the wrong thing before you. 
Oh, there's a big one. Number 12. That's the limit. <laughs> yeah, we got 20, uh, 10, 12 keepers in 20 minutes. Here we go, hefty 16, 17 incher. There we go, guys, gorgeous sea bass. Limited out by uh, 20 minutes. <laughs> nice job, man. Sit down and be a spectator like you. Oh, that's a big one. Yeah, guys, first sea bass ever right there. Thank you, tying on charters, putting me on the meat. <laughs> Amberjack, bro. Uh -huh. Got one. Lights out sea bass fishing. Uh, it's a humpa. Oh yeah, swivel through the eye. Nice 12 and a half inch. There we go, beautiful. Send her back, already limited out. All right, time for Mahi, guys. Got a quick limited sea bass. 20 minutes, great release. Oh, we got down. Here we go, guys, quick sea bass limit, 20 minutes. Time to get some Mahi. Next one. Well guys, unfortunately, despite this being a mahi charter, the mahi were pretty much non-existent today. When we went out there um, we fished a total of probably 25 lobster pots which is kind of what you do when you're mahi fishing if you're unfamiliar with it you just go out there you chomp these lobster pots where the mahi hang underneath they normally come right up and you can catch them catch them pretty good we actually had a good mahi trip the other day that i'll be editing down later in the pipeline but unfortunately this day we just had a cold front come through water temperatures were down to 72 degrees which sounds pretty warm but for the mahi it was just not suitable at all Every single pot we fished was just completely vacant, no life whatsoever. So after about three hours of me and Tyler just giving it our all, going out there, throwing handful after handful of chunks and fishing every single pot we could, we ended up just giving up on that front and trying to get the clients on some more meat. So we went to another wreck, catching some ling, of course some sea bass, which we released because we already got our limit for the next hour or so before we had to call it a day and head back to the dock. Got a ling, baby, let's go. First ling right there. No more sea bass, perfect. Big 
somebody gonna go back? Yeah. just got back to the house fortunately the clients were nice enough to give me some ling and sea bass right here that's gonna be my lunch and I uh, figured I'd try to save the video a little catch it cook for you the mahi bite that I really thought we were gonna get on was just not there today we fished so hard and so long as you can see I'm exhausted four o'clock it's 3 45 now it's been a very very long day almost been up for 12 hours and uh, yeah but just the mahi weren't there we went out about 30 miles fish in about 140 feet at a uh, spot that we've caught mahi at before that normally produces mahi, a ton of lobster pots, which is what you want to be at this time of year. And the water temperature was like 72 and a half. We checked 23 lobster pots without a single mahi on any of them. We drove right up, looked down, saw some bait, didn't see an amico jack, a band of rudderfish, nothing. So nothing was out there, no life. Headed inshore about 15 miles off and same thing. Water temperature was about 71 degrees. No mahi anywhere. We tried about half a dozen pots there and that was at two o'clock, right? So we're two hours over the limit of the charter. We were just trying to get the clients on some fish, get them on some mahi that they came out to catch, but we didn't go home empty handed. We caught our limit of sea bass, caught, uh, I don't know, almost half a dozen ling, plenty of ling, plenty of sea bass. So plenty of meat was definitely caught on that trip. Hence why I have some right here. But uh, yeah, just the mahi weren't there. Water temperature when we caught them two weeks ago was 75. Somehow it cooled down to 71 in those two weeks and the fish just weren't cooperating. So hopefully next time they're biting, but you never know when you go out there and especially when a date's already booked in advance, it's not always the optimal conditions to catch the, uh, the target species. So without further ado guys, let's get to work on this fish over here. Only got three ingredients, adobo, olive oil, and some fresh sea bass right there, fresh ling right there. Very white meat, should taste delicious. But yeah, very simple recipe. I'm exhausted, as I just said. Don't want to do anything too complicated. Probably just going to get a nap after I finish this meal. But uh, let's just get to cooking. All right, so we're going to put just a small amount of oil right there. I'm trying to do it with one hand. Spilled some right there, but it's all right. There we go. Let that oil kind of heat up before we toss the fish in there. Because one thing you don't want to do is oversaturate the fish with the oil before it gets hot enough to cook it. So... If I were to throw the fish in there now, it would get really soggy and really wouldn't taste that good. So I'm gonna let the oil heat up, then I'll throw the fish in there to cook it. And then that's that, two minutes on the pan. We should be all set. Gonna lightly season these with adobo right here. One of the easiest seasonings. Already seasoned the ling right there. Time to do the sea bass, just light, light coating. That should be enough. Something for some added flavor right there. I mean, the fish would taste just fine by itself, but might as well spice it up a little bit. All right, the oil is nice and viscous over here, so. Lay it on these fillets and get ready for the sizzle. There we go. Two ling fillets going in. We'll do these guys first. Oof. Only needed about two minutes on each side. Pretty hot right here. So, don't just cook it too long. A 
there we go. It's been about three minutes, so the link should be done over here. It's kind of breaking apart. It's very, very soft meat. There we go. Got the sea bass on. There we go. All right, this should take a little bit longer. These are all much bigger fillets than the uh, lane, but it's gonna take too long. Well, that cooks though. Gonna enjoy some potato chips. And the fresh cutling we got here. So, without further ado, let's do a little taste test before we uh, enjoy the sea bass. Bite one, the ling. Mmm. Very good. Very, 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 very mild. Almost has no taste, but I'm not gonna play them. Perfect amount of adobo. Put this on a potato chip. Got a little fresh ling cracker right there. Mm. Very good, very mild, very soft. Honestly, out of 10, I'll give it a nine. Eh. Out of a 10, I'd give it probably a seven, eight, just because, I mean, it's very mild. Has a, I mean, a small flavor, but nothing you really want to crave. And I mean, it's a pretty mild fish, so pretty bland. Nothing too exceptional about it, but definitely not complaining one bit. Mm. Fork or hand. Mm. Good texture, so seven, eight, final score. Wait for the sea bass to cook, then we'll uh, taste test that. All right. All right, guys, it's been about four minutes. Sea bass should be done. Looks pretty good. I think next time I should go a little bit lower heat because it seemed to curl up really quick, but should be fine. Here's your sea bass, gonna go sit over there at the counter, do a quick little taste test, and uh, yeah, enjoy my lunch. All right, so we've had the ling, time for the sea bass here and the mess of potato <laughs> chips I got. All right, small forkful full of sea bass. Here we go. Can't beat it. One of my favorite fish, honestly. Mild flavor, a little bit stronger flavor than the uh, than the ling. Not really a fishy flavor by any means. More just of a, I don't really know. It was kind of a little bit more of a salty flavor, but uh, yes, I'm gonna give the sea bass Give a sea bass an 8.8, 8, a whole one point higher than the ling, but you just can't beat sea bass. A little bit biased here. Sea bass is one of my favorite fish, but mm, it's so good. Favorite way to cook sea bass is definitely breaded, pan fried. I might do one of those catch and cooks in the future, but for right now, this is just fine. I'm gonna eat this and the rest of my uh, potato chips over here, and then we'll. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one, so. And yeah, that'll be a wrap for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Video wasn't what I thought it was gonna be, but ended up turning out pretty good. I have a nice lunch right here. It was half potato chips and half fish. But um, yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in again. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. If you did enjoy the video, like and subscribe. Really appreciate that. But uh, that's a wrap, folks. Peace out.